Okay, for our second exercise, we're going to be introduced to vector shapes. This is unit three. Remember, these exercises are just meant to introduce you to these concepts and give you a hands-on chance to play with them. You are not being graded on your mastery of these yet, just your your willingness to engage with them and get in there, try to work with them, because that's how we're going to learn. So what are we trying to learn through this exercise? We want to review the, basic, the basics of shape tool modification. So we're going to do a lot of transforming, a lot of stretching, a lot of warping. We're going to utilize appropriate layering and organization to create a clean and scalable graphic image. So for this, we're looking for something that's not blurry, that's not grainy, that's a clean graphic, kind of like a logo. We're going to become familiar with layer effect modes, things like color overlay, gradient overlays, because color is a required component of this. So black and white won't, it won't end with black and white. And then we're going to understand how to organize, change the order, and move vector shapes between smart object layers. So we're going to be doing the vector shape tools within a raster program using PhotoP. And this can also be done the same way in Photoshop. With this module, we can look at past instructor and student examples. You can review past uh, tutorial demos through the NLC Arts Lab YouTube page. I'll also be recording like I am right now, everything I do for, for this task this semester. And then we're, we're working to complete this shape composition and submit it next class, so on Wednesday. So it's a quick turnover. And I don't want you to try to be too perfectionist about it. I want you just to get in, not waste a lot of time, play with the tools. And there's only one thing you're turning in for this unit, and that is exercise two, which I just call a shape composition. Now, just like we had a theme for our exercise one, our line art jumble, we have a theme for this vector shape tools composition, and that theme is to make a custom emoji. So this was a custom emoji I made for Lord of the Rings. So I want you to make a custom emoji for your band book, the same one that you used for exercise one. Here are some past student examples. I remember this one was for Lord of the Flies. And then remember, you can always use our YouTube page, not just to see the current demos that I'm recording right now, like the one we just did for exercise one, you'll see that playlist. But if you go back to last semester, you'll see the playlist for this exact project. And I've done the emoji things twice. They're, they're, it's a good thing to do while we're remote. So you can also see it from fall 2020. All right. Now, just like I gave you for exercise one, I give you step-by-step -step instructions here just because we're getting introduced to the tools of what I want you to do. So I'm just going to go through them quickly, and then I will demo it. So step one, you're going to take the band book title that you used for the last exercise. And then we're going to use on the Chrome or Firefox browser this site. It's called Emoji Maker. But it's not just any Emoji Maker, it's a very particular one. It's a very simple tool. And with this tool, we're going to use simple click or unclick options to create a basic emoji that we that you feel represents the important an important aspect of your band book. So what's, what's the language of graphics? How does it work? 
graphics is about communicating visually and universally. So whenever you open or reload this site that's linked, it will give you a base layer, a base emoji. And you can use this randomizer to give you different options. But you can fully customize this. Now my book title was Speak, and it's about uh, sexual violence and shame and feeling out of place in a school setting. I like this. Uh, I like that one. <laughs> so you can do this until you maybe hit on something that's a good start, or you can just start fresh from the beginning. And so you have different options. You have a base layer option, and you can choose it, you know, whether it's a poop, a skull, yellow dot, red dot, dot with a hat, you know, all these things. A demon, a monkey, and you can side scroll and find other options as well. They are, they are intentionally very limited. So I'm, I'm gonna go with this one. Next, you can click on your eye options, and you can scroll through your different eyes. Now you can have multiple eye options. The only one you can't have multiple of is your base layer. So first I might wanna turn off the one that they've chosen, and you can see the one that they chose, it's dark gray. And so I can turn those off. And I want eyes that feel maybe a little embarrassed, a little overwhelmed, very shy, and I can layer up multiple if I want to, but that's probably gonna get kind of confusing. That one's kind of good. So you're just feeling this out. Now it looks too, maybe too subdued. There's a lot of eye options. It doesn't let you move them around. This helps you understand how limited these tools are. I like the what looks like bags under the eyes when they're combined. So what I'm going to do is turn this one off and see if I can just get one with the bags under the eyes. Kind of interesting. It's all about the subtlety of the shapes. Hmm. All right, so what I'll do, I'm figuring this out in real time, is use that, but then the next step, once you've done this, is to recreate it for yourself with your own tools. So that will give me full control and I can edit those eyebrows. Okay, next is the mouth. Let's first find the option they gave and turn that off. In fact, I can do that for all of them. So I'm just starting fresh. Okay. Now the mouth options, let's see. I want there to be tension in the mouth. I want it to feel distressed. 
The book's about kind of silence and finding your voice. Yeah, I think that might be a good one. Okay, and now accessories. These can be noses, glasses, teardrops that symbolize embarrassment, shame. I think I want one of these, probably this one. have tears, anger, sleep, all these things. They added a face mask, which is appropriate, so that's nice. Now I want something that says silence. You have monkey hands covering up. I might need to use that. That might be the best option, but let's see what the others are. Remember, you can't move these things. Not in this tool. I kind of like the one hand. At least it's human. And the icicles. It's kind of a nice shape. I use that for Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with something like this. And now I can go back and I can think what would these, this setup look like with a different base layer. <laughs> Vomiting. <laughs> That's a totally different story. It's about drinking too much at a party. But I do like the subtlety of that. The ghost is there. It's just because it's on a light gray background, you don't see it. But the ghost could be interesting. You know, for someone who doesn't feel seen. Yeah, I might go with the ghost shape. But then you can't see the shape very clearly. So, yeah, I'll go with this. All right. So now I could layer up other accessories, but I'm just going to keep it simple because we move on to the next step. So now I've found my, my emoji. I want to make that, just like we did for Google AutoDraw, I want to make it as large as I can on the screen. And then I want to do a screen grab of it. So for this demo, that's the one I put together. And then I want to do a, a clean screen grab of it. And that's our first step. So for a Mac, that's Command-Shift-4 to do a targeted screen grab. I'll just get the image itself with that gray background. Just doing a square around it. OK. Now, I want to make sure I have that in a place I can use it, because next I'm going to bring it into PhotoP. So, screen grabs just go to your desktop. At least on my Mac, they do. So I'm going to open up my class folder. I'm going to create a folder for exercise two. And this will be my speak. All right, so I've got it in my folder. And now I'm ready for step two.